Okay, so if you don't know by now, what we are going to cover, we'll talk about will be uh, the body systems in this today's lesson and next week's lesson. All right, um, now I'd like to show a few questions before starting the lesson. Essentially, some of our regular students don't, don't understand why we show this. Okay, this is the end point. So this is a national exams. So we want to reach this end point after our lessons. We want to be able to answer um, these questions well enough or perhaps understand the concepts well enough to address these questions. Okay, so these are the, a few questions that we want to attempt later. Talking about the direction of um, blood flow and how different um, amounts of substances are present in different parts of the body. And then this one is to describe, to analyze a graph, to describe the differences in the rate of absorption of digested food. <clears throat> okay, what we will be covering, covering today, if you don't already know, some of you can guess by what we have our pre-lesson uh, task, is we are going to look at the overall functions of the human body. Okay, so we will briefly examine the skeletal system, the muscular systems, and then we go into in depth about the digestive system and how this is crucial uh, in the supply of digested food for energy. I apologize, I can't draw very straight lines there. Um, <clears throat> and as well as um, to know the parts of the digestive system, what they carry out. And then we will move into the circulatory system in terms of how materials are transported around the body. And likewise, we want to know the parts, the functions of each part of the circulatory system. There, this is the point where I will have to mute the chat group. <clears throat> yeah. Okay, human body systems, uh, they all work together to allow us to carry out our life processes. <clears throat> Anyone wants to tell me what some of these life processes are, you can just click on a virtual hand and you will appear on stage and then you can speak. So the reproductive system, although in the primary syllabus, uh, reproduction is actually under cycles. Huh? So we want to focus on the digestive system, circulatory system, respiratory system, and then we need an overview of these two other systems, muscular as well as skeletal. Okay. Of course, these are not all the systems that your body has. There are a lot of other systems present, but uh, we don't learn them at this stage. They are, some of these are more complex in nature. Okay, briefly, skeletal system, it gives, uh, supports the body and gives the body its shape. All right, so these are the basic things that you need to, to know. Uh, the other function of the skeletal system is to protect important organs such as your skull protects the brain and your rib cage protects your lungs and your heart. Okay, these are the vital organs that um, if you have uh, that vital as in they are more important than the other organs around the system uh, in your body. Okay, so the skull protects the brain. Um, so if you have the brain damage to the brain, the heart and the lungs, uh, it is life threatening compared to the other systems in your body. Okay. Now uh, the skeletal system works together with the muscular system in terms of movement to help us to move. And we'll move on to the muscular system. The main function is, is to help in movement. So anything that is related to movement has to do with the muscular system. Okay, the muscles are the only tissues in the body that can contract and relax uh, to move other body parts. So they are attached to a lot of body parts like your bones, your, like your organs, for example, like your uh, digestive system, they, are, they, surround, they are surrounded by muscles. So the muscles actually massage them uh, through the system. Yes. Uh, muscle aches happen, okay, I'm not medical, but the muscle aches happen when you uh, stress the muscle. Let's say you run. 
you have not been exercising and then all of a sudden you go for your 1.6 run, km run or 2.4, whatever distances you run, then the muscle starts to break down. Okay, it, the, the process of breaking down means that it, the muscle has to rebuild. So it must break down before it can rebuild. So uh, that, that I believe causes the, the muscle ache that you feel, okay? So if you are doing regular things all the all day long, staying at home, chances are that your muscles are not going to ache very much unless you stress them. And then the body that's a signal for the body to say, hey, I need to build muscles because I'm carrying out a lot of uh, activities that need more muscles, like running, like uh, okay, you're too young to carry weights, huh? but anything like, like that, or you might do some stretching exercises that may stress the muscles. So um, that's a signal to the body to produce more muscles. Okay, the heart is an involuntary muscle that beats all the time. So the heart is a muscle, huh? just remember that. Okay, so if you live up to 70 years old, your, butt, your heart will have beat about 2 billion times. So um, as I mentioned earlier, many parts of our body are surrounded by muscles. So uh, your digestive system is one of which. So whenever you eat or drink, it is not gravity that moves the foot down or moves the foot around the system, but the muscles that are massaging and moving the foot around. Okay, let's have a very quick 30 second video on this. Okay, not the best example. I don't have a, I can't, couldn't find very good examples on eating and drinking upside down. But if, um, yeah, you can watch it. <laughs> It's fine. Now, uh, yeah, you're right about the blood cells. It does not have mucus. Mucus is to, uh, if you remember your lessons on cell system, mucus is to control the activities in the cell, right? And to carry out, uh, also to store genetic information. But red blood cells are uh, produced at the bones. So there's no need for uh, rep uh, reproduction of the cells by themselves. So the bones produce the blood cells, these red blood cells. Um, and their activities are so specialized that they don't need a brain to control, to carry out these activities. They just have to carry the materials and move the materials. So there's no, um, no brain system to, to say, okay, this is where I want you to release the materials and this is where I want you to absorb materials. Okay, so they know all these kind of functions very well. So they're also shaped in this way, we call it a bioconcave way, so that um, it allows them to move through very narrow blood vessels, essentially the capillaries. Okay, and when they are filled with more substances, they become rounder they, or they swell up like that. Okay, blood vessels are present everywhere in your body. There is no part of your body that does not uh, have a network of blood system. So you bleed everywhere when you cut yourself, except if you are to cut your hair, that's a different part of your body altogether. Okay, blood vessels allow uh, only a one direction flow of blood. Okay, we mentioned what valves are earlier. There are three types of blood vessels, the arteries, the veins, and capillaries. Essentially, they are uh, found in different parts of the body. Yeah. And they are different sized because they have different um, roles to play in the circulatory 